Hello there, many thanks for joining us on Joy Asanya Live this beautiful evening. Again, I'm just excited to know that you're right there watching us as usual. Well, today we are again going to uh, discuss the NNP, NNPP rift. That's uh, the new Nigeria People's Party this rift. Uh, for some of us who have been following the news, so much has been going on there. If you recall, we had a guest not long ago, the publicity secretary of um, one of the factional <laughs> factional leadership of the of the party who uh, alluded that there was no faction whatsoever well like i said on that day i was going to bring on this same studio the factional uh, national chairman who would give us a good in-depth as to what happened what's going on especially the news recently uh, that the faction had suspended governor of Kanu State, Abba Yusuf, for six months over what they called failure to appear before a disciplinary committee to defend an alleged infraction against the party's constitution. So much is going on. My people will say the, the, the pressure is getting worse. So we'll go for a short break now to return to discuss all that's going on in the NNPP what can be done to if it's possible for a reconciliatory move and so much more stay with us we'll be right back Welcome back from that. Like I said earlier, we have uh, Dr. Agbo Major. I like to call him Major Dr. Agbo <laughs> <laughs> right here in the studio. And he will tell us how he emerged um, uh, from the caretaker committee chair to the national chairman of the NNPP. I think that's where we would like to start the conversation. But first of all, thank you so much for honoring this invitation. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure to be here, Joy. It's uh, been too yeah. long. Oh, yeah, you didn't come looking for me, although it's not been easy. We've just been mm. moving here and there. You know, after every general election, we keep uh, moving around, mobilizing people, preparatory to the next round of elections, you know. So we've just been up there. You not know, my job not basically not is not in the office. It's on the field. As national, pr as national chairman or as a publicity secretary or... No, as, as national chairman, of course. As national, national chairman. chairman. Yeah. Brand new. The, the last time we had a conversation right here, you were the publicity secretary of the NNPP or was it just um, it, uh, what's going on? I'm sure on? that was uh, either 2022 or early 2023 before the general election. Uh, that's uh, uh, you're talking uh, of uh, over a year, you know, and uh, six months, not even a year is enough for anything to happen in the life of a political party. So now let's talk we've about transformed, we've moved on. Yeah, let's, 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 let's yeah. talk about um, how you image chairman and the plans. Of, of course, we'll talk about the plans, the ongoing plans towards the um, uh, off-season or off-cycle elections that will come on do we have parallel candidacy but let me not jump the gun <laughs> how did you emerge chairman of the nnpp well we have uh, repeatedly talked about this on air i have uh, not on joy on your life so oh okay so i have to open up again yes please uh, it's like going back and uh, taking it all over again but uh, as you are aware you know you've been a friend of the party yes as public secretary in 2022 after the 2022 convention march convention yeah i emerged as publicity secretary and uh we the status quo was like that until uh, after the election uh it's not for me to say it here now that there were a lot of problems on our way to the election but as a political party with matured minds we tried to manage them you know so that uh, we won't uh, distract our followers and our voters, you know, so shortly after the election, we had to start looking inwards, you know, to be able to deal with those challenges that uh, were showing their heads, you know, as we headed towards the election. So 
and it culminated in a lot of things you know we tried to see who was really there for the party who was uh, not there for the party who was working for his or her personal interest and so on and so forth and you, you know and uh, that led to uh, the board of trustees of the party that is the conscience of the party taking far-reaching decisions you know as to how to deal with those challenges you know mm. so precisely on the 28th of uh, august 2023 we the board of trustee had its extraordinary meeting in lagos you know and uh, they took uh, very far-reaching decisions you know concerning the reorganization of the party of course you know that after every general election there is always uh, the need uh, to, to reorganize, reorganize and all of that look at what happened why did it happen exactly and so and uh, the meeting culminated you know uh, so into a direction which was given by the board for the nwc to meet and so on and so forth and the nwc met you know uh, leading to the national convention and uh, on the 29th of uh, august 20 22 the national convention met in lagos rockview hotel precisely where i was made the national chairman of the party and that has been my status even as we speak now wow i i like how you brushed over everything so quickly and so um succinctly however let's take things uh, one 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 at a time no, i'm here for you yeah you i'm excited that you're here you for me because go into specifics if you want i would love specifics because okay. um, i would like to first of all know why there was such a rift or that that internal wrangling that happened because i saw like a lot of nigerians did uh, the suspension of, of even your presidential candidate and several um, top, well, I would call them uh, top members of the party. So, yeah. uh, is it is it is it? You said it, your meeting culminated to some very tough decisions. Is that what you meant when you said that? Well, uh, I told you that uh, on our way to the general election, there were a lot of issues. You know, people getting involved in anti-party activities. Mm people getting involved in fraud, people getting involved in things that uh, were alien to our constitution, you know. But like I said, we tried to manage them, you know, so that uh, we won't be distracted. But after the election, like you and I know, we needed to appraise the situation. And uh, the most be scapegoats. People have to be held responsible right. for their misdemeanors, for things they did that were clearly not in tune with the provisions of the party's constitution. And that was how even the presidential candidate himself, you know, became a, a victim. Not, not I, really a victim. We, we, but, we, read, uh, we read it. Uh, at some point, you were accusing him himself of anti-party activities. Yeah, this, these are the uh, things uh, I'm talking about. Right. You know? A lot of things, you know. Uh, and uh, like you know, nobody is above caution. the organization. Of nobody course. is above, above caution. Nobody has uh, the exclusive and unchallengeable right, you know, to violating the constitution of the, the provisions of the constitution of the party. And so we needed to hold some people accountable. Now, what, of course, what, what, there, Asadani was the leader of the party. Mm -hmm. I remember that he came in with his concourse and the TNM movement. Yes. The two movements came in to fuse into the NMPP. And so uh, when we say he did certain things that were not in line with the provisions of the constitution, then you can imagine what his followers would have done. I know? would like to know what and those things are. If you don't mind, we would like to understand. As a journalist, I'm sure that at a point you would have read that uh, we were trying to unearth certain things that happened to our accounts. The accounts, the accounts of the, yeah, exactly. the accounts of the party, yeah. Mm. So, so you sure saw you saw discrepancies. It. I mean, I just want to, I want it clear for those who might not have followed it, um, like we did. Well, did uh, you I find this. We, what we did, what we did was we noticed that uh, there were certain things that needed to be explained mm. as to what happened to taxpayers' money, the funds generated from. Uh, the sale of nomination forms, the fo the funds generated for campaigns. Was that within? The, was that within his uh, office? I mean, the fund. These funds were supposed to go to the party secretariat. How then were you, was he now dragged into uh, accountability for those funds? Well, uh, you you are an outsider in the party, and uh, like I always say, it's not. Uh, and I'm right just talking about an ideal because we are looking at we an are ideal situation. We, we are looking. Yeah, you see, let me tell you, as the leader of the party. He was the presidential candidate. Of course. And by virtue of that, he was the leader of the party. You know, and uh, what happened was that uh, there were a lot of accounts, you know, openly in the name of the party that were targeted at generating revenue for campaigns and all of that. Naturally. Which, which he directly managed. 
which he directly managed. Yes, but those accounts were opened for the purpose of his campaign as an MPP presidential candidate. And so whatever went in there were purely taxpayers' money. You know, then they, you're talking about the accounts of the party directly. Uh, we because it's already a subject of investigation. The EFCC and other relevant agencies are already looking at it. So I don't like discussing them on air. But I can tell you that uh, there are so many things that happened to even to the accounts of the party. You know that uh, we're waiting for the EFCC to on it for Nigerians to know. We'll, we'll be able to you know discuss that openly after they have done their job and come yeah. up with some findings. But I can tell you that to a certain extent, he had some firm control over the party's accounts. Some firm control? Yes, firm control over the party's accounts and certain things went wrong, which we think uh, He's were not proper. Po culpable for and uh, we asked him to explain. He refused to explain. Okay, now and that's why he got that punishment. Still that talking hammer. about, still you, you, the matter is with the EFCC, so we might not go in there, but still talking about finances around the party. A lot of people, your critics will say that he came and breathed some sort of life into the NNPP. Some of um, the components of the breath is finances. So all the monies you are um, now today asking for, he even brought them. I mean, that's what you're creating. Does that say. give him the right to, you know, uh, take it away? If he okay. brought them, once it comes into the party, it mm -hmm. becomes public money, public funds. It probably So the fact that even if he happen. brought it, in the first place he didn't bring it, what happened was that, yes, he came in with his followers and a lot of them came to run, to run for elected positions, you know, and they paid for forms, they paid for other things, you know, membership, subscription, and all of that, that they needed to do by virtue of the provisions of the constitution. Right. You know, a lot of them came in through the Kwankwase and TNM movement to run as candidates. And so they contributed, you know, to the expansion of the funds of the party, you know. But uh, that's not the reason. The fact that he brought it, you know, if the party were not there, would he have brought the funds to the party? The party is a public entity, and so once such money comes in, ideally, there should be accountability. Exactly, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. True. Ideally, but, yes. But what, what would you say is the reason why he's not forthcoming with, with, um, like you just alluded, that he's not forthcoming with the information around uh, the funds that he's accused? Well, of. I don't want to, I don't want to sit here to guess why, but your guess is as good as mine. One, uh, you know, there are people who just believe that uh, they are too much to be held accountable in this country, and that's why our democracy is suffering. You know, that's number one. Then number two, uh, the way he gave it, the way he came in, you know, we gave him a lot of space to operate. So he thought that uh, he has come and that uh, his position in the party is unquestionable and all of that. Uh, he didn't know that one day people would ask questions and all of that. So uh, I think... Uh, the others are uh, for him to say what we have done is what we should do bring him to the public court let nigerians ask him why if you want to be president of this country for instance we are not very political party you know a lot of things are wrong people are saying tell us what happened and you're not able to tell us and all of that so it's left for nigerians to judge but what i can tell you is that uh, uh, what he did is uh, left for nigerians to you one know, of the uh, accusations, out, one yeah. of the accusations you had against him was that he was um, practicing, or, or how do you call it, uh, was having these conversations with the president at the time. At the time, I think it, the president Tinubu was president elect, and he was accused of having um, clandestine meetings. Uh, one that you think was uh, what even made him fail. I think I read something like that, and that you called you you attributed that to be anti-party of some sort. Yeah, but you and I know that that is clear antipathy, especially when you are doing such a thing that is not uh, obviously not in agreement with uh, the vision of the party. The no, party did not set out to, right. as I told you, we didn't set out to work with any other political party. If there was a reason for any form of understanding, mm -hmm. it would have been clearly spelled out, and Nigerians would have known from the blast of the whistle that at a point we're going to have some form of talks with one political party or the other. But you also need to know that... Uh, Where there talks, because I, I want to know, because mm. as, a, as a human being, there's no uh, restriction to associations, so to speak, and the fact... First week. Were you privy to what was discussed during Were those you? meetings? Were you? I, I was supposed to. But I, but I wasn't privy to it. So if you're not privy to it, why then call whatever was discussed? As, as spokesman, of the, as spokesman of the party then, mm. if you won't let me know 
what you are going to discuss with the candidate next door. And you know that Nigerians will be asking Was me. he a candidate at the time these discussions were going uh, on? Or that's he that's was, what I was going to tell you. That he was, because when even, before, before, broke, even, he before, was, even before President Tudor became president-elect, the man was already jumping from one candidate to the other. And you are a media person. I'm yes, sure, I remember I'm having sure. this yeah, interview with you. And exactly. I, I, would, I would remind you of your statement at the time. Mm. And then, you know, there were, it was rife, that conversation around, is um, are other co political parties going to... Um, you know uh, what's it called now there's a, a very popular word for decamping or stepping stepping aside in support of your candidate and so when i put it to you that um speculation at the time i didn't have any sort of evidence at the time but when i put it to you that your candidate was having meetings was pot spotted with other political parties you said it is possible that other political parties would have to we may step aside in support or in on in endorsement of your political party and that was the reason why there were those late night meetings that some journalists had uh, were preview to and exposed why is it different today i said it was possible mm -hmm. If I had had details of those discussions, I wouldn't have told you at, at the surface level that, that it, it, was was it was possible. Fantastic. I would have told you exactly the crux of the discussion, what was being discussed, what was on the table. So I take it you have you have the information now because you seem to have made a stand as to... Yes, because we eventually discovered that what he was doing with them was not in the interest of his candidacy. It's Neither was it in the interest of the success of the party. Can, the the political party be more, can the political party be more ambitious than the, the, uh, the aspirant or candidate? No, Joy, the difference is that nobody is saying, you see, the candidate has his role to play. Of course. The political party has his role to play, but the two must tally to be able to arrive at where they need to arrive at. But if you have a situation where the candidate is on his own, doing things that are not known to the leadership of the party. It's worrisome. That was exactly the gulf we had. Mm. That was the, the opening we had. That was the, 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 the gulf we had. He was doing his things. Nobody knew what he was doing. Meanwhile, it never occurred to him that it was the job of the political party to explain to Nigerians what he was doing. So that was not a fair way of going about it. You know. So if I told you that, yes, of course there's nothing wrong with parties coming together to work. And you remember that at the point we even tried the OB Konkoso ticket or something like that at yes, the point. Yes, of course. You know, so there's nothing wrong with that. It's not bizarre to politics. It's not bizarre to campaigns. Mm. But what is bizarre, what is shocking, what is unacceptable is if the candidate is on his own doing his things the way he wants without letting the party know. I'm telling you what will be more critical and more dangerous is when the spokesman of the party does not know what the candidate is doing. You bring me on air here, you ask me questions, I have no answers to give to you. How will Nigerians look at the party? What is the openness in our programs, you know, in our activities as a political party? These were the challenges we had. Okay. So if he had come out clean to say, okay, gentlemen, this is the way I want us to go. Hmm. That would have been understood. And we would have, you know, set our eyes on that, you know, with slight modifications. In such a way that the party will not be hot. Mm. And those who believe in us will not be hot. Those that came in and met, because he came in and met members, large crowd, as members of the political party. He came in and met them. And these ones were asking us, what is really going on? We had no explanations to give. I think that's not. Uh, Would you say because a lot of a lot a lot of narratives have been out there, and I'm happy you're here to clear clear the air and uh, give us your own side of it. But would you say that um, uh, the Kwan Kusia and TME uh, merge uh, mergence rather did not is not pop, was not properly structured in such a way that uh, I've heard people say that the Kwan Kusia people came in and wanted all the juicy spots uh, in in administrative. Uh, positions. We've also heard that there was that tussle as to who gets what. And maybe it wasn't defined when you were coming, when there was that alliance. And so uh, it even got to a point where it was said that uh, even those who were existing state chairman were being pushed aside so that you can have like an, an, an all Kwankosia kind of movement take over the NNPP. I just want clearance on your, your thoughts on, on that. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, um, that marriage was hastily put together. There's no doubt about that. Hastily, okay. Yes, it was hastily put together. Uh, we just had a few meetings, you know, but because we're running out of time, mm. 
you know, then INEC had already released its uh, schedules as to what the parties were expected to do from convention to this and all of that, you know. They had so we're already running, you know, uh, foul of time. So we're in a hurry to put the agreement together. So uh, if I say it was easily put together, I want to leave it at that. What are uh, any other details that are there are details that are just for internal consumption, not for, you know. So, but when I say it was easily put together, you should understand what I'm trying to say. A lot of things were not uh, considered. And considered. Yeah. Right. And uh, but our fears, we thought that we were dealing with people who are very fair, you know, people that uh, can be trusted, people who would also understand that we came into this agreement based on mutual respect, you know. And the agreement, mind you, was just for the purpose of the election. The agreement was that uh, after the elections, we would come back, since this was done in a hurry, we would come back to look at how it has fared, either work on it, mm. you know, or maybe discontinue it and so on and so forth, you know. So that was exactly what happened. But uh, during the course of the existence of the agreement, while the agreement lasted, we discovered that certain things were not uh, properly done. Part of it is what we are now talking about. You know, the crave by the Concordia group to take over everything. We had issues where the original members of the party they met were being pushed away with reckless abandon. You know, without fair hearing, they would come and say, when your state chairman is dismissed, if it is state chairman is dismissed, your state is crossovers dismissed and so on and so forth and we're worried these were people that were there working for the party before you came if you have any reason to dismiss these people what we are saying is for god's sake they should be given an opportunity to explain you know we didn't see that we just discovered that this dismissal uh, what is it was wave. targeted yeah wave was targeted majorly on the original members of the nmpp that were there before they came and at that point we say ah this is not uh, what should happen here you know and so when uh, the founder of the party, Dr. Boniface Okechiku and Ibn, called the attention of uh, the leader to it, that was when the problem now started, you know. And uh, as at then, they had already dismissed about 11. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Have you seen where an arbiter would say the complainant and the person complained against cannot appear at the same time to join issues? What the committee did, the committee they set up after the election, what the committee did was they would ask the petitioner to come mm. and meet with the committee members separately on a separate day and then ask the person against whom the petition is written before you go to ahead, appear were you part day. of this same committee yes i was a member so you already know that uh, nothing did you did you while the, the, this this uh, probing was going on did you notice anything that was uh, suspicious from the first day i challenged it the modus operandi of the of the committee i challenged it i said this is bizarre to me that I haven't seen this kind of thing in arbitration before. You don't bring somebody who is complaining against Joy on a separate day and bring Joy on another separate day. It doesn't happen. You bring the two of them together. Maybe the fear of uh, it getting to... <laughs> How? I don't know. How? Politicians will always shout, but they will always resolve and come back to agree on what they need to agree on. So it was strange to me. I challenged it. I said it is there. I have said it several on eh? I challenged it. I was the only person who challenged it. But they had their agenda. The agenda was targeted at the original members of the NNPP. Hmm. They dismissed 11 of them from Ogun to Niger to Rivers. These were innocent people that did nothing. But um, ac according, to, according to the report from that committee, these people um, were supporting, and they, according to them, had evidence of uh, openly supporting, at some point even taking away the the structure of the party in support of another political party. Wouldn't you say that was worth um, dismissing? So why didn't they suspending? suspend the presidential candidate who openly was showing support for other candidates? It did, well, you didn't. You, who was part of that committee, did not raise this <laughs> issue because I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people watching right now mm. would not say they saw this open support. At no point did so say, you know what, I am letting my office go or my quest or ambition go for another political party. Mm. So maybe that is why. So why did you see any of the 11 state chairmen say that? Allegedly. They fed you Allegedly. with what they wanted yeah, to feed you that, with. And, and, I, I, and, I, and, I'm and that's why I'm him. telling you here that there was nothing like that. These people were simply victims of that wave of removal because they are original members of the NMPP. Okay. And that went very deeply to confirm their agenda 
of trying to hijack the party. If not, that we woke up in good time. They were almost done with the agenda. But we stood up and said, no, what we are seeing is not in the spirit of the agreement we had. And so it's no longer acceptable to us. And that is the reason why we've had this protracted uh, disagreement that it has lasted up to today. Mm. Because what we saw them doing was not unexpected. We never thought they were going to go that far. And we said, okay, we even uh, extended the olive branch, said, okay, no problem. Let's come back to the table and look at the provisions of this understanding again. And they said they were nev never coming. They were never coming? Never. That they were never going to come. Why do you think that is? Could it be uh, that... Um, if I have an agreement with you, the agreement is to last for two months. At the end of the two months, I say, okay, Joy, come, let's review this agreement. And you refuse to show up. How do you want me to interpret it? You are not coming now. You are not coming. Because you already, had an, you already have an agenda. The agenda is to, you know, uh, overrun me. The agenda is to, you know, uh, blackmail my boys. The agenda is to do whatever I want to do to the original members of the NMPP. So, with that, they felt they were comfortable enough and that they were not prepared to come and discuss the provisions of the MOU with us anymore. Well, it's a good time to go for a short break right now. There's still so much to discuss. How uh, can uh, these two factional parties survive? I mean, uh, we've always said that uh, when you get to the big boy table, you have to deal with the big boy issues. Is the NNPP in the big boy table now generally recognized as a third force or sometimes uh, in some quarters there's a fourth force considering how the elections went? How are they going to get to a middle place? Um, all that questions will be asked after this short break. We'll be back after that. This is still Joyous on your life. of the day. Unwind with the reminiscence of the day's news from home and abroad with Captain TV 7 p.m. News. Good to Abby Janos on Captain the News at 7. It's good to have you join us what on Captain TV think? News of at 7. National foreign news headlines get balanced accurate facts on the latest news in business politics entertainment sports and more live from our studios many thanks for watching join us again at Time tv news Welcome back from that. If you're just joining us, we've been discussing the NNPP and uh, the factions in it. In my studio right now is uh, Dr. Agbo Major. I call him Dr. Major Agbo. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Major Abu <laughs> is right here in the studio. He is uh, the national uh, chairman NNPP. Well, there's yet another national chairman posting to be national chairman. So we're getting to the bottom of it all. Recently, the uh, NNPP, one of the NNPPs had uh, their neck meeting where as uh, uh, some sort of uh, validation that that's indeed the recognized party, the Independent National Electoral Commission was there to supervise uh, that activity. And I'm going to ask um, uh, the other national <laughs> chairman, now this is so confusing, the factional chairman right here in the studio, what is going on there? Did, does it concern you? You say you have the board of, of, um, uh, the board of uh, trustees with you, uh, which is, like you said, the true founders of the NNPP. And so that makes you legitimate. However, does it concern you that the Independent National Electoral Commission 
uh, in some sort, in some way of uh, validation that that's the authentic NNPP uh, attended that, that NEC meeting? Or national that's, a, that's a very beautiful question. And I think that is even the main issues that should form the crux of our discussions tonight. Oh, really? Yeah, that is the main, the, the real canal. You see, INEC is uh, a regulatory body for political parties. Their job is to register and regulate their activities. Right. Their job is not to meddle into what happens... Internal wranglings. Internal wranglings of a political party. Right. Their job is not to determine who leads a political party. Their job is not to determine who is uh, the proper chairman of the party. Every political party has its constitution. And inside it, you could find the procedure through which somebody could become chairman or become any leader at any level of the political party. And that was exactly what the, the Board of Trustees followed. If you go to our constitution, 2022 has amended, you would see that in a situation like this, the Board of Trustees as a conscience of the party is expected to step in. And that was exactly what, it, what they did in August last year, which saw to my emergence as a national chairman. And as I speak to you now, in line also with the provisions of the constitution, the Board of Trustees has written to INEC, drawing their attention to the crisis within the party and the need for the board to be brought in to stabilize the party. That is the position of our constitution. If you go to the constitution, you will see where it's explicitly stated that in a situation like this, the board has the exclusive responsibility, you know, of stabilizing the party, calling to order any individual or any organ that seems to be doing anything that is not in agreement with the positions of the constitution. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly the positions of the constitution that they invoked, which sort of my emergence. That has been done. All relevant correspondences have been sent to INEC in respect of that. And What's I'm the sure reception like? Have you gotten a response from INEC? Well, uh, they are working on it. I, at least I can see some reactions now. Because you talked also about NEC, their purported NEC meeting and national convention, mm. where they tried to, you know, change our logo, change our flag, and change so many things. Well, what do you mean by tried? They did that. But it's not working. It didn't work. Why, what do you mean? They are, still, they are still posing with the new flag. Where is it working? I am telling you, Joy, that if you do not know, I am telling you that INEC has told them clearly that what you did is not in line with the provisions of the law. In spite of being there to supervise the activity? INEC has to go. Remember, they, they, you recall that, you recall they, that they that convention, for, hold yeah. on, you recall that that convention was held even against the fact that a court had already arrested that matter. And in the face of the law, once a matter is alive in court, status quo is expected to be maintained. Mm -hmm. So we had expected INEC to have stayed clear even from that convention. Of course, uh, when the first pronouncement was made by the court, they stayed away. But when the court returned again to say, we don't know how this thing will end, INEC now went out of their way to go there. But they should have known. Mm -hmm. And again, this goal takes me to the angle where it is important that we let Nigerians know the directorates in INEC, the legal, the EPM, and all the various uh, directorates headed by directors. The INEC chairman cannot be everywhere. He doesn't have to look at all correspondences coming. He doesn't have to look at details of all reports coming to his table. Of course, all of them are addressed to him as the chairman of INEC. Right. But it is the job of these various directorates to properly you know, advise the INEC chairman on what decisions should be taken in respect of whatever matters that are arising from those correspondences. Mm. That is one thing that Nigerians need to understand. And we are urging INEC to always do the right thing by, by you know, advising the chairman properly. But I can see now that the chairman seems to have now come in tune with the developments in the party. Of course, in the meeting of uh, yesterday, he told them clearly that he is aware that uh, NMPP is boiling and that uh, he is now getting to understand what is going on in the party. And he openly warned that this change of logo, this purported change of logo, even the convention that they claimed they had, that they are against the law. And so we are back again to our original constitution, our original flag, our original uh, logo. And that is the way it should be. INEC has to be seen to be very, very impartial. They don't have to take stands. Of course, we have always been saying that 
once there is disagreement, because in politics people must always disagree. Exactly. Once there is disagreement, the job of INEC is to stay aloof. You watch them resolve it. If you must step in at all, if there is a direct order from the court mm. or a judgment from the court like we have now, where two courts, one in Oka, one also in Abuja says it's the exactly. internal matter of a party. With that, of course, we are not even satisfied with those directions. Because oh, 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 we had oh, expected oh. the courts to tell us, okay, this is the way we want you to go. Right. But that's not what they said. They just said, go and resolve internally. At this level, INEC is expected to say, okay, what do we do? Oh, yeah, the two parties. Come, let's talk. I am the just as confused as several Nigerians watching us right now. Because who owns the structure? I don't want you to leave without answering this. Who owns the structure? Although, Chief uh, Boniface uh, Abunam, Abu I, 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 I was part of the uh, founding fathers. Not was. He's the founder, He's the founder of the, founder party, of the yes. party. Um wh who, who owns the structure? Because a political party is not necessarily owned by a human being. It's a political party that is out there for Nigerians. Mm. Everybody should. Who is a member is a part of uh, the ownership of that political party. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But what is the structure? Because it seems like... Um, the uh, Kogi state elections, for instance, mm. you field um, a candidate, and if you did, they field a candidate as well. So, how did it work? Well, uh, what the situation we have in our hands now is that whatever happens, an NNPP candidate for whatever election is an NNPP candidate. So, whose who's faction? You're a national chairman. I own doing elections are coming up. Uh, Edo elections are coming we have up. We have our candidate in Edo state. Who is your candidate in Edo state? We have our candidate in Edo State. Who is he? <laughs> you want to know his name? I want to know he, who you would call as the candidate NNPP is fielding for the general elections. Because if I go through my, if I, if I do a quick Google search right now, it mm. will be Reverend, I can't remember his name right now. Who the other... The one you are seeing on the Google mm. probably is the one that is uploaded by INEC. That's the one you are seeing there. Exactly. But I'm telling you that we have a candidate and the matter, we have taken it before a court... To explain to Nigerians, the court will, will give a directive as to who originally should be the candidate of the party. So, so leave that. No, 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 it's an no, internal matter. There was a parallel uh, primary of course, conducted. Yes. Of course, yes. Ondo as well. Yes, yes. Is that even, I pose this question mm. to the, the, the publicity secretary of the, uh, the factional um, NNPP. Mm. My question is, is there a possibility for reconciliation with the mess it keeps getting worse with elections coming and going uh, with Nigerians confused. You see, you see, Joy, when you have leaders that seem not to appreciate that peace is everything, that is the problem you have. When you have leaders that seem not to be prepared to stop at anything but to continue to perpetrate illegality, that is what you have. For us, we know what a political party is. Mm. A political party, of course, whether formed by an individual or formed by a group, belongs to everybody. People have the right to join. People also have the right to leave. Our problem is simple. We don't want anybody to come in and say, I am, you know, I want to dominate. I want to be the one to dictate what happens within the party and so on and so forth. That's the problem we have. So for us, our windows are open. Initially, when this thing started, it started just like a joke in 2023, July. But something strange happened. While we were looking at it as a mere joke, we now saw we are a group of people who were expelled, already expelled from the party, came together to say they had suspended and expelled the founder of the party that the constitution says you cannot suspend or expel. The constitution in section 12 says the founder is, there shall be a founder of the party. Mm -hmm. And the founder is a life member of the board. By extension, he's a life member of the political party. The implication is that you can't take him away even for one minute. Okay. It was when we saw them, uh, when they came on air to say they had suspended and they had also expelled the founder of the party, we now knew that it was no longer a joke. That was when we closed our window. We said, okay, let us see how it goes. So they are there. We are here. We are the original founders of the party. We have the certificate, which was what Dr. Nebula flood or flashed in Lagos about two weeks ago. ago. We saw that. Yes, about two weeks ago. Mm. So let us see how it goes. What we are saying is, 
we are not averse to any form of settlement. But what we are saying is that those who brought us to where we are now must be held accountable for the level of damage they have done to weaken the party. We are prepared to build our party back. You understand what I'm talking about? But there are a lot of people who are benefiting from this crisis, and so their job is to continue to ensure that peace does not return. Once again, we are back again after almost a year. By August this year, it will be one year. You know, any crisis a party suffers for one year is enough to weaken it. Mm. But we have this strong spirit. We have refused to be weakened. We are moving on strongly. We are saying that, okay, if they are able to retrace their steps, and it occurs to them that they came and sought for assistance from us, and we availed them without any cost tied to it, Mm. Why are they unable to tell Nigerians if they gave any money to Dr. Anibram? Why are they unable to tell Nigerians if they gave any money to Major Abu that they met as the person running the party with Dr. Anibram? Why are they unable to tell Nigerians? So we have given them enough room to try to come back to their senses and then tell themselves that what they are doing is out of place morally, it's out of place constitutionally, and so the best thing to do is to return to where they went to. Mm to go and seek for this assistance, to go and seek for this platform. If they return, Dr. Anebunan, by his nature, is one man who does not close his mind to anything. He's ready to listen to them. If there's anybody that may be a little bit difficult in listening to them, it could be me, <laughs> because I am badly wounded. I can tell. But Dr. Dr. Anebunan is one man with uh, one kind of heart. He's ready to take everybody in. He sees himself as a father. He will tell you, okay, come, let's talk, and so on and so forth. So if they are able to return to say, okay, this is this, this is that, this is that, we'll get talking. Okay. Uh, you know, and the so starting point will be to go back to where we started from mm. and then see how we can begin to rebuild from there. But at the moment, I can tell you that uh, there's even what the courts are saying, why we have gone on appeal over the two judgments, is that somebody has to start the talking. I've never seen where you, who availed me an opportunity to take advantage of something that you have, would, you would be the one to now come and say, let's talk. If they are ready to talk, let them come. If they are not ready to talk, we continue the way we are now. At the end of the what, day... What, what is the way you are? Before you answer that. Because the way we are now is that... Come back to this the way we are now is that the party is in the hands of its original founders. Yeah. That's Dr. Anebunam and the National Association of Government Approved Freight Forwarders. While a group of people somewhere are telling themselves, deceiving themselves and deceiving Nigerians that they have the party went out of their way to change logo and all of that and all of that. Now, Lineik has told them that that is not possible. Even I'm sure Nigerians, I'm sure Nigerians are now just hearing it for the first time that the purported change in logo and flag and whatever has been rejected by INEC. But where, 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 where then are we going to get sanity for this? Because I am confused. You have just said that um, they are purported. However, it is their candidate that is whose name he has been up uploaded in on the INEC server. No, leave that. I, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't no, no, no. Mention it because Nigerians are, are watching and saying, okay, you know, there are the. the can, can, I, of, can, I, can I tell you something? Can I, can I tell you candidate. something? And if elections are tomorrow. It is their candidate that would be on can the ballot box. If, if 24 hours to the election, if a decision is taken for that candidate to be removed, he will be removed. That I can tell you. So now, why, why, why do you think that INEC, uh, would I say, take, took sides? I'm, 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 I'm well, I, I'm not here to say that. But remember, I've made a statement here today that we had expected INEC to have followed due process because they have a constitution domiciled with them. Mm -hmm. They know what is inside. Right. They know that, okay, at a critical moment like this, the board has a job to stabilize the party. That was exactly what they did. Is the board... They also you, know... Eh? Do you have the board? I mean, your faction of the party, does it, is your board complete? Or we have uh, some members... There of is the no... Board. The, the board is the board. The party has a board of trustees. The party has that, a board of that trustees. Is not do you have your board of trustees all with you uh, in, 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 in your factional leadership? That's what I'm telling you. The board of trustees of the party... The board of trustees of the party mm. is intact. No member of that board is with the other faction? Well, there are others that uh, are members by virtue of the provisions of the constitution. Like the Kano state governor is a member of the board as an elected governor. Mm. You understand what I'm talking about? Right. Then those who have also served as national chairman, I mean as national chairman at one point or the other, national secretaries and all of that, are, members are also members statutorily. Mm. So they are there.
Okay, so, speaking about uh, the governor of Kano State, I mean, you have to address this before you leave. We are really running out of time. Now, uh, you and your faction suspended uh, the governor, according to you, for failure to appear before a disciplinary committee to defend an alleged infraction against the party's constitution. Can Nigerians know what? Um, I, I have uh, I've permitted you enough to use the word faction. Please, for the many part of this yeah, program, I mean, don't use it again. But now, let I me leave that. Okay. You are my friend. Let me leave that. <laughs> now, we have been vindicated. You have? Yes, we have been vindicated. The governor was suspended on account that he participated in an illegal convention. That is the Aconquasia Convention. That is the same convention that has just been declared illegal. That is the convention that purportedly changed the logo of the party. That is a convention that purportedly changed the flag. That is a convention that purportedly changed the motto of the party and all other things they claim they did. So we are, we are vindicated because our issue with the governor was as an elected governor on the platform of the party. Why will you participate? If they had told us it was a Concursia convention, we will allow him because he's a member of the Concursia group. But the Christian did MNPP convention. Mm. That was our bruise. That was our problem. And that was what led to us invoking relevant provisions of the Constitution, which says uh, gross act of misconduct such as that, what you need to do for the purpose of fair hearing is to set up a committee. The committee was set up by the NWC. The man was invited, given enough time to prepare to come. He didn't come. He didn't come. We gave him like, another reminder and gave him another date. He also didn't come. And so, what else were we supposed to do? No individual is above the party. That's why even his own principal was suspended earlier last year. Anybody could be suspended. The only person that cannot be suspended from MNPP is the founder of the party. And it's because the constitution vests on him the right to be a life member of the board. Any other person could be suspended, even me. That's why you see that Sometimes when they say they suspended me and all of that, I don't even challenge it, even though I know that they didn't do the right thing, they didn't follow due process. Joy, I'm telling you that there was never anywhere they invited me to appear even before a committee. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that the governor only paid for his misdemeanor. He did what was wrong. And he was given an opportunity to come and explain. He refused to come and explain. So, where is your standing with the governor, uh, who is uh, still... Um, the N N NNPP governor. Yes, of course, he's uh, still an NPP governor. Uh, we, we have that on our records, that he was elected on the party's platform. We are also not unaware of the fact that he is a member of the Conquasia group, but the Conquasia stuff is silent because we are talking about NNPP. how, because Conquasia is not a political party, so he wouldn't have been elected on Conquasia platform. Mm -hmm. He was elected with the logo of the NNPP during the election. So uh, he has another opportunity. He has it's just under suspension for six months. If at the end of the six months he is unable to mend fences, you know, and come back to explain to the party why he should be pardoned, further actions will be taken and the constitution Which is very could clear. Be what? Uh, because there you have you have uh, I think uh, after some, suspension some what next? makers as well. Some of whom are with this governor. Uh, we are with uh, uh, Rabbi Kwanko, so we, we didn't do anything to the lawmakers because they didn't attend the convention. You may not have been told right. that a lot of these lawmakers elected on the party's platform did not attend that convention because they are not happy with the situation in the party. And they are core party people. They know that they won't be doing what is not in the interest of the provisions of the constitution of the party. A lot of them did not go there. But the governor was very prominent there. He even delivered an address there. And that's why we had to take on him. So at the end of the six months, if he fails to return to the party to say, gentlemen, uh, I'm not above the party, even though I am governor and so on and so forth, let's talk, let us see how we can iron this out, and so on and so forth, uh, further, th further actions would be taken against him. And the next thing, of course, after suspension, of course, you know, the next thing is expulsion. expulsion. And we won't hesitate to do that. Even though that's the only governor you, you have, even though that's the only governor the NNPP has. Do you want the party to die because a governor is there and is not doing what he should do as a governor? 
Would you say? If I were the governor, do you know that I would not allow this crisis to get to this level? If I were in his shoes. Would, was that something he could have done? Is he not the leader of the party as we speak to you now? What, what the highest he, elected person on the platform of the party. What could he have done? He's too immediate and then bring the two giants together. The man who went to meet another man to say, please help me. And the man who said, take, go and use it. Is to bring the two of them together to talk. Once they talk, there will be ceasefire. So as governor, ordinarily, that's what he's supposed to have done all this while. But he allowed this crisis to protract for as much as this one year. Mm. So what are we talking about? Would you say there's an underlying, uh, because I've had accusations that uh, maybe there's an influence by other political parties just to sway you or sway or cause this rift? That's what I will tell you. No, I'm not. That's what they will come to tell you. Would you say that it's possible that... Yeah, have you also not heard that at a point I was even given one billion naira by the APC? Were you given? To fight. Were you given? Am I a member of APC? I'm not sure. I'm not with politicians. I don't know what's going so on. So APC will give me money to disrupt the activities of my own party that I joined Dr. Anubunan to build for 21 years. Does it make any sense to you? It's blackmail perpetrated by people who have no job to do. The only thing they do, they do, they look at politics as a blackmail weapon. They say all sorts of things about so, so, our people. So, um, Dr. Bo, what's going on now? You still campaign for your candidate in Edo State and Ondo State? The, the, is the, that not confusing for the The logo of the party is on the ballot. We are campaigning for NMPP. I get what I'm telling you. And I just made a statement now. I said, if at the 11th hour, there's a change, there are two candidates now. For the eleventh hour, there is a change. Mm. You are not voting for the candidate; you are voting for the party. It's the party that wants election. With all that's going on, do you think it would affect the outcome? Are you confident that? Well, there is always a price to pay. There is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. And you are admitting that? Yes. Well, what What do you want me to say? When does who have who on whose shoulder rests the responsibility of ensuring that there is stability? Mm. Are the agents? that are perpetrating the crisis. What do you want me to say? Okay, so finally... So we are campaigning for our party. Our party is on the ballot in Edo and on those states. Whatever happens, it is the party that receives the votes. That's what I can tell you. Dr. Agbo Major. I like to call you Dr. Major. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my mysterious self. Thank you so much for being part of the program. It was nice to, you know, hear your side of the it's story. It's a pleasure. Yes. So this is where we draw the curtains on Joy Asaya Life. It's been a very interesting edition today. Rest assured, we'll be back tomorrow with so much more. Have a 